Here we are with the Mayor's City of Sparks Award and our own Mayor, Gino Martini, going out there to congratulate our winner of this prestigious award. And that's it for this installment of Spotlight on Sparks. I'm Adam Mayberry. Thanks for watching. And be sure to stay in touch with the city on Facebook and Twitter and the city's own mobile app. And remember, it's happening here. Last year, more than 70 people died while crossing the street in Nevada. Don't become part of the procession. Make smart choices when you're walking and cross the road safely. I have three tests next week. I'm gonna be studying all weekend. Ugh. Are you studying tonight? We can meet up and study together. Oh yeah, that sounds good. What time? Um, I work until six. Okay, sounds good. Just text me after. Okay. No! There is no text, tweet, or call that's worth a life. One pedestrian death is one too many. Look up. And look out for each other. Even if no one in your home smokes, secondhand smoke can be closer than you think. Secondhand smoke from a neighbor's apartment can enter your home through air vents, through light fixtures, and even through cracks in the walls and the floors. Secondhand smoke is toxic, especially to children. Protect your family. his remarks he'll have a special announcement from Nevada magazine and then following that we will have a reception uh, out in the lobby we hope you can stick around for cake and refreshments so uh, with that I'm happy and, and uh, proud to introduce the uh, other handsome bald man uh, <laughs> the mayor of the city of Sparks ladies and gentlemen Well, I'm glad you did that now. You might not want to do it after the speech, so <laughs> that's probably a good thing. So, Well, anyway, uh, good morning and thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for being here with the City Council, our City Manager, uh, Steve Driscoll. It's really a pleasure for us to do this every year. I, I enjoy this, uh, uh, enjoy doing this every year. So just a quick uh, a few uh, announcements or a few uh, introductions. Uh, some of the people from the city of Sparks, of course, our city council. We have Julia Ratty here. We have uh, Ed Lawson. We have uh, Ron Smith, and we have Charlene Vibe. So thank them for being here. <laughs> and of course, our police chief Brian Allen and our fire chief Tom Garrison are here. So we appreciate you guys being here. <laughs> also, we have County Commissioner. Von Hartung, he's our commissioner in Sparks, so give him a big round. Uh, County Manager John Slaughter is here. John, thank you. 
head of the chamber, uh, Len Stevens, soon to be retired. And of course, our city manager, Steve Driscoll. And then probably the most important one for me in the room is uh, the one that keeps me grounded and every time I think I'm a little better than I really am or get a little, you know, big head, she brings me back to earth, my wife, Ruth. Thank you. So, I look forward to this annual address to reflect upon where our city has been and where we are going. Sparks is a city that has survived the unsettling days of the Great Depression. Like so many communities across our nation, we have suffered with loss. Our losses are numerous. We're talking about jobs and families were affected and those losses seem to compound themselves as the recession went on. For a while, the future looked for many of us very bleak. It's safe to say that those most challenging days are now behind us. While we do have some battle scars and some lingering effects of the recession, we will remain for a while, that will remain for a while. We are emerging from our darkest days and it feels good to be on the upside of the economic events of recent times. We are venturing forward with renewed enthusiasm and an eye towards prosperity. The main path we will take toward the prosperity is through economic development throughout the Truckee Meadows in northern Nevada. As we move into 2016 and beyond, the city remains committed to ensuring a positive quality of life for current and future residents and businesses. The city's vision statement and core focus is to be the city of choice for residents, businesses, and visitors. Every day, Sparks employees do a, a great part to make Sparks the city of choice. We continue to see positive financial growth going forward, but, the, but that does not mean or suggest that we have recovered from the effects of the Great Recession. Property taxes in the current fiscal year are up about 6%, and are expected to increase by 1.6% in fiscal year 2017. Now, 1.6% increase in 2017 is not much, really. For all the growth that we're going to have and growing, that's not much of, a, of, of an increase. And I don't think we will be able to recover on property taxes until the legislature decides they want to do something with the tax cap. I mean, to do away with it would not be the right thing to do, but I think there's some tweaks we can make there that will bring some revenues that we have lost. 35%, 40% of our assessed value has gone down the drain, and it's not going to come back with a 3% tax cap, trust me. So please, legislature, uh, let's do something with that. Let's get the cities some more revenues that they need. Okay? Count on you, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no, that's no pressure. Reve <coughs> Revenue from consolidated sales tax is trending upward from 8.5% over the last year, and we are forecasting an increase of 7.5% fiscal year 2017. And revenue from building license and permit fees has also been trending upward of 5% for the current fiscal year. Economic development is a widely used frame, phrase that means growing business for uh, too many of us. Economic development requires the support of everyone in our city. This includes leadership, local businesses, government entities at all levels, our economic development and visitors authorities, and even you, the private citizen. We all have a role when it comes to touting our area as a great place to start or expand a business. It's not just up to businesses to carry the load. We are all affected and we almost all must be involved. This city is preparing for growth. Our planners and engineers are working with the Truckee Meadows Planning Agency, local legislative bodies, business entities and individuals to ensure that smart growth will carry our city into the future. Sparks is committed to resisting the temptation to grow for growth's sake. Economic development doesn't just happen automatically. It takes vision and planning. It is all about collaboration 
and working closely with local, state, and federal officials. The City of Sparks is doing just that. Every idea starts with the, whoops, don't want to skip this page. Every idea starts with a vision. Some will materialize and some won't, but it won't be because we haven't explored each opportunity's road to success. Transportation, roadways, and infrastructure are often considered a top priority when tabulating the pros and cons of development. Northern Nevada has been on the top of those priorities even before the crippling effects of the long-standing recession gripped our region in the first decade of this century. In and around Sparks, roadway challenges have never been out of the city leader's purview. The long-planned Southeast Connector, or Veterans Memorial Parkway, is soundly underway. When completed in late 2017, this vital roadway will provide an alternate north-south link, easing traffic congestion and providing a more efficient movement of goods that can only enhance economic development. The long-awaited Pyramid McCarran intersection. This project is expected to get underway this spring. The critical project will enhance traffic and pedestrian safety and provide added capacity for one of the busiest intersections in the Truckee Meadows. Nearly 60,000 vehicles use this intersection every day, 60,000. Demolition of the buildings and structures continue and we expect the project to be complete in the spring of 2018. In the meantime, please exercise caution and patience as work proceeds. And believe me folks, there's gonna be some pain coming here, really, there's gonna be some pain. So, you know, get ready for it because it's not gonna be fun for two years going up and down pyramids, it's not fun now, but I can guarantee it will not be fun when this project is going on, so please. Get ready for it. Don't call me because it's not going to change, okay? <laughs> call the Regional Transportation Commission. No, I'm, no, you can call me. I don't mind. But really, there's going to be some pain here, so be ready for it. I appreciate the Regional Transportation Commission for their leadership and staying the course on these two monumental efforts. Sparks infrastructure challenges and maintenance are never out of the watchful eye of our Community Services Department. Functions such as planning and zoning, redevelopment support, street maintenance, sewer and storm drains, traffic engineering, facility and park maintenance, and the Truckee Meadows Water Reclamation Facility provide the backbone of our city operations. Home developments in the master planned areas such as Pioneer Meadows and Kylie Ranch, nearly abandoned during the Great Recession, have geared up and are now again building and employing. In 2014, we began to see more life in single-family homes with 368 permits. In 2015, that nearly doubled to 663. And it's happen happening all over our community. Get ready, folks, because the city of Sparks is growing again. To cite a few more housing advances, a new senior apartment building is under construction just down the street from City Hall. It will provide modern, quiet living in the established neighborhood close to the heart of Sparks. We are seeing a renaissance of Victorian Square, really. The city's downtown hub and the home to the new Fountain House, a 230-unit multifamily housing complex with restaurants, shopping, and the movie theater within walking distance of the development Fountain House will provide commuters and a quick trip to dozens of employees migrating to Northern Nevada to start or expand their businesses. The former Silver Club, a 206 unit six story building vacant for years is being converted into a new 100 unit urban style rental community. Known as the C Street Lofts, the contemporary styled urban housing will appeal to all ages of young minded people who want a really cool place to live while taking advantage of all the amenities Victorian Square has to offer. And the former Bourbon Square Casino, now the yard, is being converted into Class A office space with retail dining on the first level. And be ready for some exciting things to happen in the Audi Corridor. We've got some exciting things coming down the road that I think you will really enjoy. 
And I think we even have a new owner of the uh, shopping center where Target is, so we could look for some, some things to happen there very soon. We hope so. There is no city in Nevada better situated or better suited to serve the growth of the Tahoe Regional Industrial Center, or TRI, than Sparks, Nevada. <clears throat> Sparks is in a most advantageous geographical location. The huge 107,000 acre, 160 square mile TRI industrial complex lies a mere nine miles from Sparks. All roads leading from northwestern Nevada to TRI take travelers and commuters through Sparks. The ability to provide services, goods, and amenities for an enviable quality of life for the employees and families engaged with businesses housed at TRI will benefit the economic vitality of the city. No one will deny that Tesla, Switch, Zulily, Walmart, and so many more have brought great recognition to our region. We know the presence here of those and other business giants can lead to dynamic development, and we're prepared for it. Economic development includes the social well-being of the people of our city. Tied to that are the special events our city is known for. The right special events are good for our citizens and tourism, and thus good for business. Special events are important enough to Sparks to be specifically named in our strategic plan. Special events are truly why we say it's happening here. But I don't want you to take, to take my word for it. Past citizen surveys have revealed that special events are important to our citizens. Also high on the list is the importance of feeling safe and feeling good about shopping here and spending money in our community. And feeling proud of our neighborhoods and happy to show off our Western heritage. Sparks is unencumbered by the hostilities felt in some cities who find it difficult to get along with political partners and neighboring cities. A solid city doesn't just spring out of nowhere. Since economic development encompasses many walks of life and is often a catchphrase to describe many aspects of building for the future, a city it must be planned. We must continue to diversify our development. Single family homes alone can't bring a stable, stable revenue base. We need and encourage commercial development that brings the revenue required to support a full service city with public safety services, parks, and all the amenities we've come to expect in a progressive community. And that's why I want to talk about Sparks' comprehensive planning cam campaign, Ignite Sparks. The movement currently underway that seeks feedback from all Sparks' residents and stakeholders. The city's master plan is a planning document that charts the course of how our city will grow and develop. The public has been invited to participate with the city and the results will bring forward the issues of most importance to our citizens and help us up update our comprehensive or master plan. As our region and city grows, the need to chart our course is evident, particularly in the light of all the recent economic development news. We are undertaking a dynamic public outreach program designed to encourage residents where they live, work and play, and understand where the opportunities lie for our city 5, 10, and 15 years from now. We need your input today. The outreach effort focuses on a boots on the ground approach with, with outreach to citizens at events, through community bus tours, industrial businesses, residents at all economic and socioeconomic levels on the online through the website with an interactive component and social media tools. Last year, the city met with the Champions team. The nearly 40-member hand-picked team is comprised of representatives from a variety of backgrounds and demographics that include Sparks residents and non-residents alike. The Champions team will serve as an advocate for the outreach, connecting in individuals to the fabric of the community so we can build a blueprint for our city's future. Phase two of the Ignite Sparks campaign is taking place right now. 
The second survey allows us to dig deeper into the minds of our residents and stakeholders and better identify the responses heard last December. The vision is survey, the vision survey is online at ignitesparksnv.com along with additional information on the outreach program. This is where the rubber meets the road. City leaders don't profess to know it all. I don't know who put that in there, but. Uh. <laughs> Where's Mayberry? I don't know if that's true or not. But, uh, let me read that again. City leaders don't profess to know it all. Okay. This is the opportunity for you, the residents and stakeholders of Sparks, to let us know your vision of how to grow and develop our city. We don't want to guess. We need to hear from you. We have engaged the services of the Ignite Sparks team to gather detailed feedback from the community. This information will be used by our planners to develop and update the city's master plan. The information will be key to shaping Sparks for the next 15 years in, into the year 2030. The results of the year-long initiative will drive those goals and plans for our Sparks planners and are keenly aware of the need of our city to be ready for the population growth the growing economy provides. The future looks bright. The possibilities to shine are nearly limitless, but good decisions cannot be made without the thoughtful planning requ required to move Sparks to the next plateau. This community absolutely loves who they are. So the planning challenge is how do you grow and not lose the amazing sense of community pride and this small town family feeling. Get online now at www.ignitesparksnv.com to give feedback that will help shape Sparks for the next 15 years. Even with our city, even though our city is not fully responsible for statute by, for implementing crucial policies and programs for our citizens, such as schools and transportation, our city can be and must be an advocate in these important areas. Whether it is surface or air transportation, flood control or even water management, all are drivers of economic development and our quality of life. This is precisely why Spark City Council members and members of the manager's staff actively participate on boards, councils, and committees that affect not just Sparks, but our entire region. I salute our council, our staff, and the volunteers who serve our citizens so well. Thank you for your innovation and commitment to making Sparks even better. I appreciate the efforts of our management and labor negotiation teams. All the negotiations with our bargaining units were completed well before the June 30 deadline of this year. Thank you to both sides for working in partnership for the betterment of our citizens. I'm also very proud of our professional and focused customer service staff at City Hall's customer service counter. I want to thank the customer service team for providing the very best first and last impression when it comes to doing business in the City of Sparks. We are mindful of our non-English speaking customers and currently have three bilingual staff members serving our patrons. I am grateful to the men and women who continue to serve and protect our residents every day. Our police department is committed to working with all groups and neighborhoods throughout our city, including our diverse population. They regularly participate with the organizations such as local NAACP chapter, the Black Student Union at the University of Nevada, and by attending the annual Race Policing Symposium. Chief Allen and his team are mindful of the importance of building trust and rapport with those they serve. Our police have built a strong presence in our urban core by hosting neighborhood barbecues and other events that allow residents to get to know their police and understand how we can all work together to keep our communities safe and secure. This winter, we had more snow than we have seen for several years, thank God. And our public works staff met the challenge and did an outstanding job of minimizing the impact to our citizens. Staff spent over 2,100 hours and drove nearly 9,800 miles while performing snow and ice control including brine application, salt sanding, plowing, 
sidewalk clearing, and parking lot clearing. This is enough mileage for two round trips to the state of Georgia and back to Sparks. Now, I don't know what that has to do with anything back to Georgia. <laughs> Anybody going to Georgia here today? Did I? All right, well, that just gives you an idea how far it is. Right, Adam? Yeah, okay. The crews gave up sleep and time away from their families to ensure that our citizens had safe roads to drive on and clear access to city facilities during the snow events. 2015 brought significant improvements to the Truckee Meadows Water Reclamation Facility. This was compliance with the 500 pound per day nitrogen limit. Nitrogen is a component of wastewater which must be treated before discharging back into the Truckee River. High levels of nitrogen support algae growth in the Truckee River and can negatively impact river wildlife. Through a concerted team effort, the daily average discharge of treated water in the Truckee was reduced to 408 pounds per day, almost 25 percent from 2013. The efforts to reduce nutrients continues as the Tum Wharf team works to protect the water, the water quality of the Truckee River. And this is really important. Uh, you know, this is a tough one to understand really for anyone that's not a rocket scientist, doesn't work out at the uh, water reclamation facility or like I call it the sewer plant, okay? That's, everybody knows what the sewer plant is. So. But these, these things I'm telling you, nutrients in the water are devastating to the river. They're devastating to our fresh water that we need for our citizens. So this, this is a big deal. We were very, very close to uh, uh, violating our uh, permits and those kind of things, which means big fines and those kind of things. So this is critical to, the, to what's going on at the, uh, the sewer plant out there. And, and I really appreciate what those folks have done out there. And later this week, we will celebrate the completion and the operation of a new generator to, to heat and electrify the plant. The new system provides 35% of the plant's existing energy needs through methane gas, which is a component of a treatment process. This is something that goes off into the air, and that to use it to do this is, is incredible, and we're going to do more of that. That's, gonna, that's coming in the future. We continue to be mindful of the responsibility in preserving our environment. Last year, the City Council approved an amendment franchise agreement with Waste Management for a new residential single-stream recycling program for 28,500 Sparks households. The updated agreement preserves waste services options for Sparks businesses while expanding the types of materials residents may recycle. In the first month of operation, 92% of, of Sparks' residential waste management customers use the new single stream recycling service, making Sparks participation higher than other nearby jurisdictions. <clears throat> Sparks Parks and Recreation continues to put the spark in Sparks. Thanks, Tracy. This past year, the playgrounds at Recreation Park and Shelley Park were replaced with colorful, inviting play equipment. New playground equipment truly revitalizes not only a park, but its, sur its surrounding neighborhood. With only a quarter of American youth engaging in the recommended level of daily physical activity, park amenities such as this are also vital in helping to promote a healthy lifestyle. You can't miss the bright orange slide and the web-like climbing structure at Shelley Park, or the giant saucer swings and comet spinner at Recreation Park. Now, I had to ask, where in the heck is the Recreation Park? So, this is behind our recreation center on Richards Way, I, and I didn't know that, you know. Been the mayor for 10 gosh darn years, didn't know that, Tracy, so thanks for pointing that out to me, I appreciate it. I appreciate our city team for reopening the Alf Sorensen pool. The pool was renovated and reopened last spring after a, lo a longer than expected closure to make necessary repair repairs. I would like to give a shout out to our residents of Sparks who for their enthusiastic support of the many swim and fitness programs the facility has to offer. Last year, the Sparks Fire Department responded to nearly 12,000 12, emergency calls for service. This represents a 10% increase from the previous year. 
And they did this by maintaining the high level of service and response times they are recognized for. Our fire crews aided state and national neighbors last year by responding to 17 major wildfires. This support was especially appreciated by the state of California as our crews, crews helped battle the devastating fires that occurred in the state last summer. Our fire management team worked with regional fire partners to improve local automatic and mutual aid agreements. Last year, Sparks Fire Resources provided automatic all-risk response to the Truckee Meadows Fire Protection District 353 times. And while, we'll talk, and while we're talking about the fir first-rate Sparks Fire Department, local chatter continues on consolidation, or as some refer to it, re regionalization. I want to make it a clear again that Sparks is not interested in any consolidation efforts. The city will always maintain a high performing fire department as we have for more than 100 years. And we'll do it with the model that works for us and we'll do it at a good price for our citizens. I want you to remember that. The model that works for us and the price, good price for our citizens. Don't forget that. I continue to admire our financial services staff who ensure we stay focused on the fiscal needs of our city. For the 34th consecutive year, the department earned the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. That's a mouthful, Jeff. The highest award by the Government Finance Officers Association. They also received the Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for the fiscal year 2015 budget. We recently completed a successful bond sale to help finance the North Truckee Drain Project. The bond was rated AA- minus by Standard & Poor's, which is a high grade quality rating and exceeded our expectations. This sends a very positive message on the fiscal management of our city. And speaking of the North Truckee Drain Realignment Project, I'm very pleased we have completed the first two phases. Eight years ago, Sparks enacted a fee on its residents and businesses to support its share of the flood project. To date, the city has invested $25 million on the North Truckee Drain Realignment Project, which will direct the drain further downstream into the Truckee River, east of Vista Boulevard and Sparks. This critical realignment of the drain will reduce and minimize flooding to the Sparks industrial area. The project is currently about 40% complete. Now that financing for the project is moving forward, the Sparks project will com complement the overall regional flood control project. I want to thank the City Council for their leadership to ensure we reduce the flooding potential in our city, protecting life and property in our future economic prosperity. I also want to welcome Marnell Gaming to the Sparks family. We are excited for what Marnell will offer our city and downtown Victorian Square with their new investment in the, the uh, Nugget Casino and Resort. Next November, sadly I might add, we will lose two seasoned members of the Spark City Council. Councilman Ron Schmidt and Councilwoman Julia Ratty will both step down. Councilman Schmidt has served his city for more than 15 years. He has been a strong advocate of sustainable fiscal policy for our city. Councilwoman Ratty has served us for eight years and has reminded us, reminded us of the importance of maintaining and serving the older areas of our city. I salute them both and thank them for their dedicated service. On that note, I want to thank all of our city council members, Julia Ratty, Ed Lawson, Ron Smith, Charlene Bybee, and Ron Schmidt. And most of all, I thank our city manager, Steve Driscoll, for what this total team has done. It's, it's been amazing. I, I appreciate the efficiency of our meetings and their willingness to always get the job done. You know, we, we don't kick the can down the road here in Sparks. We don't study this, study, 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 study forever. We do a study, we read it, we look at it, we do our homework, and you know what? By the time the meeting's over, we make a decision. We don't have to put it off for six or eight weeks like 
some <laughs> some committees that I've recently uh, been on. So I, you know, that's just us. I, I, I'm just so proud of this council and our city manager. I can't say enough. And of course, the staff and management. God, awesome. Where do I go? Okay. Also salute our regional, state, and federal officials who work every day to make Northern Nevada a better place to live and raise our families. In my remarks this year, it was important to accentuate, you can tell I'm getting ready to end this, right? Okay, good. It was important to accentuate the positive and remind our region that Sparks is open for business. We welcome business and industry to take a look at Sparks and all that we can offer. Again, thank you for listening today. God bless all of you. God bless the city of Sparks. God bless the United States of America. Please, please. You know, thanks again. It's my pleasure. We have one more presentation, if you don't mind that I... You know, it's not always easy for us in Sparks to uh, capture attention. We are smaller and at times remain in the shadow of a larger local government. This phenomenon is no different than any other metro area where a dominant city name takes precedent. We know Sparks is special, it's unique, and it's different. Phase one of the Ignite Sparks campaign confirmed the love and pride our residents have for our city. Meanwhile, Sparks forges ahead because there's a lot, of, lot happening here every day. Progress and confidence is returning. Our city is poised to keep up the fast-paced development and not to merely react to developments as they happen. I want to keyword here conclude with a very special announcement this morning. And here to present the news is the publisher of Nevada Magazine, Janet Geary. Welcome, Janet. Thank you very much, Mayor. Oh, this is a little loud. Anyway, I am Janet Geary. I'm publisher. Is it working okay? Uh, publisher of Nevada Magazine. I have with me Adele Hoppy, who is our marketing uh, manager, and we're very proud to be here today. Uh, Nevada Magazine, if you're not familiar, we are the official state magazine for the state of Nevada. We've been publishing for the last 80 years. Uh, we actually started publishing in 1936. So to uh, commemorate our 80th anniversary, we started a program called Tour Around Nevada. We ask uh, all the residents in different cities and towns to vote for their favorite town. And uh, Sparks, we just got inundated. Uh, in fact, our, uh, our editor's mailbox just completely uh, shut down because we got so many votes for the city of Sparks. So you guys need to congratulate yourself. You are our city uh, winner for our uh, March-April 2016 edition of Nevada Magazine. And we're very pleased to uh, present Mayor Martini with a, a plaque and a... Um, and a cover from Nevada Magazine, uh, and that is uh, to congratulate you for uh, winning our tour around Nevada. Thank you so much for in, uh, having us here today. Thank you. Council, don't get away because we need to get a picture of you guys with this, okay? And again, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks.